Support for Windows 7 officially ended last night at midnight on the 14th of January. That was about 14 hours or so after the updates were released for January, so at least you have those updates on your computer. But going on forward, any Windows 7 machines will likely be a ticking time bomb in terms of security, because there will likely be exploits found and held at those machines. So anyone using one, uh, the risk is the machine could no longer be under your full control. So not a good situation to be in. So looking through the advice that Microsoft have provided about uh, upgrading to Windows 10 or going to Windows 10, and they're saying, get a new device. The best way to experience Windows 10 is on a new PC, of course, because the hardware requirements for Windows 10 are much higher. I mean, let's say you could be running a 10-year-old hardware on a rotational hard drive. Well, Windows 7 will, and that would be a bit slow, but how do you think Windows 10 runs with the additional resource requirements? <laughs> Not very well at all, I think is the answer. And yeah, there's other things about small business checklist, deploying Windows 10 Enterprise. Anyway, you may think, would I be recommending a move to Linux? And whilst I do uh, really like using Linux, I'm not going to be suggesting it at all. I mean, I'm not gonna say you should use any particular operating system on your computer. And besides, if you're still using Windows 7, uh, no doubt you've made a willful decision to use it and ignored many of the free upgrade notifications to Windows 10, so hey. If that's what you're expecting in this video, no, it's gonna be more of a chat about the operating system and uh, you know, discussing some of the security aspects as well, because uh, this is one of the things that people were panicking about this month. Uh, one I kind of just completely ignored, really, the Crypto API spoofing vulnerability, otherwise known as CVE 2020-0601, the one that the NSA advised about, and uh, were they advised? No, they discovered and informed Microsoft. Well, at least they did the right thing this time, so I <laughs> can praise them on that one, but uh, who's to say they may have uh, written an exploit for this? At least they kept control of it, unlike, uh, yeah, other exploits they've done. But there's been a lot of panic about it, and I'm not sure why. It only affects Windows 10, so yeah, Windows 7, not even vulnerable. But the CVSS score, the Common Vulnerabilities... Actually, I forget what the full acronym is, but it's Common Vulnerability Exposure Score. It's a rating out of 10 for how severe the exploit is. So that's... Uh, various parts make up the score. It's got, can you be exploited remotely? Is there code available? Is it a publicly known exploit? Is it trivial to exploit? So yeah, something of a CVSS score of 10 could be easily exploited over the internet. An exploit is known. So yeah, 8.1 is fairly bad. It's not horrific. But during all this, uh, people completely ignored this exploit. CVE 2020-0609, Windows Remote Desktop Gateway, or RD Gateway Remote Code Execution Vulnerability. Affects Windows Server, 2012, 2016, 2019. Uh, the CVSS score though, 9.8. <laughs> I'd be worried about that one. I wouldn't care less about that crypto API one. So yeah, just, just kind of uh, shows that people are looking at the wrong things this month. Anyway, the options for keeping Windows 7, well, you could buy extended support for it. So for enterprises, $25 per machine. This doubles to 50 in the second year and 100 in the third year. So that's a possibility. Not a great possibility, though, because that's not all updates that you may expect, really. This is only going to be critical vulnerabilities. But if there are many high-priority vulnerabilities that were discovered, then no, you're not going to get updates for them. It is uh, for critical updates. But how well used is the operating system? And the answer to that is fairly. And this, I've taken the stats for the last couple of years. So going back to 2018, Windows 10 share was actually lower than Windows 7 at uh, well, 34%, with Windows 7 being at 42%. But yet, yeah, fast forward two years to the stats known at this month. And this is from netmarketshare.com. So Windows 10 has 54%, uh, Windows 7 at 26%. I mean, well, we can say roughly a quarter of the desktops in the world are now going to be vulnerable from this point forward, unless people move. What can we say though, there's people still using Windows XP, 1%. Mm. I wonder if many of those are in China. They like free software in China. So-called free software anyway. 
We also have Ender support for Internet Explorer. So that's Internet Explorer 9 and 10 are now Ender support. Support for Internet Explorer 11 is continuing because it can still be used in Windows 10 if you really want to. But yeah, actually stats usage of that browser showed it is still higher than Edge. So I'm not sure where Microsoft are really going really, but they're keeping Internet Explorer alive with critical exploits being patched. There is one aspect of Windows 10 that I do have to praise, which is over and above what they've done with Windows 7, and that is the security protection. Microsoft have had to learn a lot of lessons, and they've taught their programmers to program in a more secure way. So they just boast about some of the security features here, which are over and above what is available in Windows 7. And none of this has been backported to 7, so yeah, you are missing out on quite a lot. Better sandboxing protection for one thing. All of which, though, does require additional resources of the system, but yeah. Let's say Microsoft have learned a lot. They're probably doing a lot better than Linux at this point and other free open source software. But yeah, that is as far as I praise them. I, mean, um, I can't stand the ethics of the operating system, the tracking components, that is awful. Usability, no. Theming, no. Security, yeah, that's okay for that. So yeah, I'm still not going to move away from Linux, but yeah, just pointing it out, the security protections of Windows 10 are a lot better. And even Windows Defender has improved. Not quite the extent that they boast about it, but it's um, not a bad antivirus now. I don't think I would turn it down at this point, especially if it was free. I wouldn't pay for any antivirus. Not that I used any antivirus anyway, but uh, yeah, on the enterprise though, um, you can do better, but costs a lot. So Windows 7, looking back at it, released in 2009, July 22nd, 2009. Had a much nicer theming than Windows XP. Kind of had some of the theming from Vista. But yeah, Vista didn't go down well, just like Windows 8 didn't go down well either. But one thing I do remember about Windows 7, USB 3 support. Oh dear, how bad was it? it certainly wasn't there out of the box. Not until Service Pack 1 came out did it actually gain built-in USB 3 support. And why was that an issue really though? But one thing, you are starting to see computer hardware have quite a lot of USB 3 ports on there. Sometimes with only a couple or even fewer USB 2 ports available. So yeah, you'd get the operating system installed and then you can't use a keyboard or mouse. It's like, great, what am I meant to do now? Or you're stuck with a choice between using a keyboard, mouse or a CD drive on two ports. Yes, I do remember quite a few headaches there. And yeah, I do have to uh, think back to the time that Linux was actually the first operating system to gain built-in USB 3 support. Certainly the version of Ubuntu I first remember using, 9.10 Karmic Koala, did come with USB 3 support built in, October 2009, not long after Windows 7 came out. Bit of a difference there. But one real egregious thing about the operating system was the forced upgrades. Oh boy, did Microsoft want to upgrade people? Make sure you schedule your upgrade. Yes. Your PC is ready for your free upgrade. One part Windows 7, one part Windows 8, one part awesome. Wow, they didn't half push it, didn't they? So in conclusion, I don't think I had anything too much against Windows 7. I, mean, I was happy at the time of Windows XP being end of life because it had held back hardware for far too long, but Windows 7, no, I don't think there's been anything that drastic in hardware advances, or certainly nothing that has not been able to work on that operating system. Using Windows 7 from now on will be a ticking time bomb. Uh, you're going to have to move to a different operating system. Whether you move to Windows 10 or Linux, that is entirely your choice. But that is it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later.